good evening. It's good to see all of you out here tonight. Uh, everybody would sing, like to sing in the choir. We're going to sing out of inspiration tonight. I think John's going to come up here and help us. So, need everybody we can. <laughs> Thank you. 
Number four. Number four. Number four. Number four.
I sort of got caught with my hand in the cookie jar up here, so I don't see but one preacher here, so I think I'll turn it over to Madison. <laughs> like he's he's drawing from the bottom of the well but anyway I'm thankful to be here good to see all of you again and just thank God for every one of you and God is good he's a wonderful God and able to meet our needs I was praying tonight and thinking about heaven and I told the Lord I said I believe it's there some things I don't understand about it but I sure believe it's there and I believe it's waiting on God's children but uh, anyway, Jerry English is going to have surgery in the morning, and he wants us to anoint him with oil. And if there's anyone else that would like to be anointed at this time, you come up. So, Jerry, if you'll come on. Okay. Okay. Okay, come right on up. Bishop also, because I know you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jerry, I know you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother, I know you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone else? Let's all pray and let's let's just believe that, that God will meet the needs. Our Heavenly Father, we do humbly bow before thy throne tonight. God, and I thank you for all of these. And Father, I pray in the precious name of Jesus, God, for your blessings to be upon these, Father. Lord, you're able to guide the doctors. You're able, Lord, to do all that needs to be done. And Father, I'm praying that you would just do what needs to be done here, Father. We're praying for healing. And God, I'm asking you, Lord, to give every one of them the strength that they need, God. Lord, we believe you. We trust you. I know that our life's in your hands. And Father, we praise you, God, for the privilege that we have to come and bow before you and ask you, Father, for these blessings. So, God, I'm asking, Lord, right now, Lord, to just give them peace. And, Lord, we believe and we trust, God, as we have done what your word says, that you're going to take care of everything. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. I know God's in control of everything, and I was down at Shirley Grove last Sunday, and I told the people that what a, what a great privilege it is that we can come and kneel before Almighty God and bring our needs to Him because He's able. And, you know, God expects things out of us also. So I want to talk to you tonight about some of the things that, that God put in here for us, that uh, examples that, that He put in about other people's lives and what God expects out of me and you. There's things that, that God expects out of us. It's not that we just uh, say, well, I'm saved and just ride along. But there's a walk that God expects out of each and every one of his children. And his word teaches us that. We all, we, we read through the Bible and we see and we get books that show the promises of God. And we all want that. But the only way that we're going to get these promises, these blessings that God has is to follow his word. And, and it's just like a road map. It's like a blueprint. We build our lives upon the word of God. And it teaches us how to come to God. And it teaches us what to do when we fail God. 
um, you know, we're living in a time today that, that people get out of the will of God and do things that's not pleasing to God, and they just sort of try to hide that and go on. They'll never have any fellowship with God unless they come and repent of those sins. And when we, we would repent of that, then we have fellowship back with God. God listens and God hears our prayers. So over in Deuteronomy chapter 10, I want to read you some scripture. And he uh, tells us what is required of us. Uh, he was telling the children of Israel what was required of them. After Moses had went up on the mountain and, and spent 40 days and 40 nights there with God and, and wrote the Ten Commandments, and uh, he come back down, and what did he find? He found the children of Israel uh, worshiping these uh, things, that these uh, idols that they had made and and they were worshiping that. It made Moses so mad that he just threw the Ten Commandments down and broke them. And, and then uh, he went back and talked to God, and God told him what to do. And he said uh, to build an ark, and uh, Moses built an ark, and uh, put the, other, the next Ten Commandments that God gave him in the ark. And he told him to go back and tell the, the children of Israel, they some things that God requires of you. These are the things that, that God said, I want you to do to be able to stay close to me to where I can uh, bless your life. And you know, that's what God wants to do. God wants to give us eternal life. God wants to walk with us every day. And as I pray, I try to look at my life and think, well, would God want to walk with me today? Would, would God bless my life today? Am I living a life that, that God is pleasing with? And, and I ask myself these questions, and then we turn to the Word of God and see what God says. And God gives me the instructions on how to live my life to where He'll walk with me and He'll meet my needs. Now, a lot of people think, well, I can just go to God and, and I pray, and if nothing don't happen, then... That's the way it is. Well, when we pray and we don't see things happening, we need to go back and look at the Bible. We need to check our life out and see if it compares with the Bible. And then if it don't compare with this roadmap that God has laid out before us, uh, we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And if we're saved, the Holy Spirit shows us. Uh, there's never been a time in my life that whenever I fail God, that the Holy Spirit didn't convict my heart right quick. And when he co uh, convicts my heart, then I have to get down on my knees and ask God to forgive me. And that's the only way that I can keep fellowship with God and walk in a way to please God. Now, here in chapter 10, uh, let me go back up in uh, uh, verse or uh, chapter 9 and just read verse 26, 7, and 28, 9. Uh, in verse 26, uh, this is Moses saying he prayed for the children of Israel. He said, I prayed therefore unto the Lord and said, O Lord, destroy not thy people. Now God was thinking about destroying the children of Israel. And uh, think about now, whenever they went into Egypt, there was only about 70 of them. A lot of people think there was just uh, multitudes of them that went into Egypt. But no, they weren't. But whenever they come out, they had multiplied to where there was uh, over a million of them, uh, maybe more than that, uh, that come out. So here, after they got out of Egypt, and, and uh, they, they were just about like a yo-yo, uh, their life was. They were here with God uh, one day, and then they were sinned and away from God the next. But... This shows us how that we ought to, uh, shows us how to live our life and how not to live our life. And whenever we do fail God, that we come and ask God to forgive us of where we failed him. That is the only way, if I get sin in my life, the only way that I can have fellowship with God is to come back to God and ask him to forgive me of where I failed him. And, and he is faithful and just to do that. 
But here is his prayer. I pray, I pray, therefore, unto the Lord. And he said, O Lord God, destroy not thy people and thy inheritance, which thou hast redeemed through thy, thy greatness, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. He said, God, you loved us. You brought all these people out. He said, Lord, don't destroy them. Remember thy servant, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Look not unto the stubbornness of this people, nor to their wickedness, nor to their sin. Lest the land whence thou broughtest us out say, because the Lord was not able to bring them into the land which he promised them. Now listen, uh, Moses was praying, said, God, said, if you kill them all, the people back there in Egypt's going to think that you weren't able to take them to to uh, the land that you promised them. And then he goes on. And because he hated them, he had brought them out to slay them in the wilderness. Uh, yet they are thy people, thine inheritance, which thou broughtest out by the mighty power and by the stretched out arm. Think of all the miracles that these people saw. I'm talking about miracle after miracle that God did for these people that they saw and they had worshipped God today, idols tomorrow. Worship God today, idols tomorrow. God loved these people, and, but now they missed out on a lot of blessings that God had simply because they did not walk before God. Now, a lot of people say, well, we'll do this, we'll do that. We ought to serve God is what we ought to do. He says, at that time the Lord said unto me, How uh, hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. Now he made the ark, he put these stones in it, and I will write on the tables the, the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark of shittim wood and hewed two tables of stone like unto the first and went up into the mountain having the two tables in my hand. And he wrote on the tables according to the first writing ten commandments which the Lord spake unto you in the mount of the midst of the fire and in the midst of the assembly and the Lord gave them unto me. Now God wrote them, God gave them to him and he told them to take them back and to give them, show them to the children of Israel, and this is how they are to live their life. God gave us the word of God here. God has given us so much more and has showed me and you how to live our lives. A lot of people go through life thinking, well, I don't think you ought to do this, and I don't think you ought to do that. When I read the Bible, I look at the Bible, and I look at medicine. That's who I judge, Madison McCracken. Bring him before God. Bring him into the word of God. Let him uh, judge his life according to what this says. Uh, if I go around judging you, uh, I, I'm just as far out of the will of God as I can be. So here he's saying, And I turned myself and came down from the mountain and put the tables in the ark which I had made, and there... They be as the Lord commanded me. Moses was doing what God told him to do. And the children of Israel took their journey from Bero of the children of Jachin, and I can't pronounce these uh, anyway, where Aaron died, and there he was buried, and Elzar his son ministered in the priest's office in his stead. And then he goes on down and, and uh, talks about his journey. Verse 8. At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark and of the covenant of the Lord to stand before the Lord to minister unto him and to bless his name unto this day. Wherefore, Levi hath no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance according as the Lord thy God promised him. And I stay in the mount according to the first time, 40 days and 40 nights, and the Lord also, and the Lord would not destroy thee. He said, I prayed 40 days and 40 nights that God wouldn't destroy all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto me, 
God arose up and spoke to Moses and told him. Now, I want to tell you something. We have the Word of God today to guide us. We have the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us after we're saved to lead and to guide us. We are without excuse. We've got examples of the children of Israel. We've got examples of other people throughout the Word of God. And we are without excuse. God is standing with his arms outstretched to save any lost person that will come. God is standing with his arms outstretched uh, to, uh, to forgive any person that's got out of the will of God that's saved and willing to restore them if they'll only come and ask. Boy, that's simple, ain't it? I mean, that's amazing. That is amazing. Uh, our, our husbands and our wives, uh, our mates, they're not that willing to forgive, are they? Uh, somebody said one time, said, take, uh, take your wife and put her in the boot of the car and lock her up for a few hours and turn her loose and see what she does. And then take your pet, put him in the boot of the car and, and open him up and he'll come out wagging his tail and, and, and licking you and thanking you. So, you know, we're human. And, and we need to be more humble. Amen? I mean, there ought to be more people say amen than just two or three on that one. Amen? All right. So here God said, this is what he's saying. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the, thy, the people that thou may go in and possess the land which I swear unto their fathers to give unto them. He said, now, all right, I promised the children of Israel this land. Now, Moses, you go down there and you tell them that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead them down there. What did they do after this? As we study on down through there, they went away from God time and time and time again. So here is what God required of them. And now I've always said, and I still believe this today, if God required something out of the children of Israel, now you say, well, they lived under the law. Amen, I agree with you. But God cannot judge them people in one way and judge us in another way. God cannot judge us in one way and judge them in another way. So if God said, now this is how I want you to live for you to receive the blessings of God, then I believe that God's still telling me and you that there's a way that he wants us to live to receive his blessings. And listen to what he says. God required something out of them people. God requires something out of us also. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But, two, what does God require out of you, Israel? What does God require out of me and you? Fear the Lord thy God. We're living in a day today that people don't fear God. They don't fear God at all. I mean, they, they just, just go and do. And, and forget about God and forget about what God says. I fear God today. I fear God's wrath. I, I fear God for my family and myself and my People I love, I fear God. And the Bible says that we need to fear God. We love God, but, but we fear. He said to fear the Lord thy God to walk in all his ways. To fear God enough that, that we're going to walk in his ways. And realize this, if we don't walk in God's ways, that God's wrath will come upon us. Here is an example that the wrath of God come up on the children of Israel. So for disobedient. So if God did that to them, if I get disobedient to God, then God's chastisement is going to come up on me also. Amen? Fear the Lord thy God to walk in all his ways and to love him. God wants us to love him. God wants us to, to love him him that's why God saved us to for us to love him and to walk in his ways 
uh, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Now, I'm going to, I thought I was going to go on, but I think I'll close there. Because, you know, we can get, we can get so much at a time, but this is what I want us to ask ourselves this question tonight. I want us to ask ourselves this question. As God, and I cannot look into your heart, I don't know how much of your heart that you give to God. I can't look in there. I, I can't see it. But I can assure you that God sees your heart right now. And I can guarantee you that God knows how much of your heart that's willing to serve him. I get on my knees every day, every day, and say, God, I'm willing to do whatever you have me to do. A lot of people said, Mo Madison's retired. Madison ain't retired. Madison will never retire on God. I'm going to serve God till the day that God comes and takes me. And I'm going to live for God the best of my ability. But also, when I fail God, I'm going to find me an altar. And I'm going to get down and I'm going to beg for, God, for God's forgiveness of where I failed him. So I want you to look at your heart tonight. I want us just to open up our heart and allow the Holy Spirit to look in there. And, and just let the Holy Spirit show you how much of your heart that you're giving to God? Renata, would you come and just play, sing, whatever you feel led to do? And I want us all tonight to look. And if we hadn't given it all to God, you want his blessings, you want the goodness of God. I was praying tonight, and this morning, I was praying this morning also, and, and tonight also, and over half of my prayer was, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, as, as blessings of God was running through my mind. Thank you, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want him to have all of my heart. Now, how much of it do you want him to have? If he don't have all your heart, I'm going to ask you to stand tonight. Would you just come, kneel down here in this altar, and just give it all to him tonight, would you? What about it right now? What about it? If he stirred your heart in any way, would you come? Would you? Jesus, Jesus, Lord, here we are, ready to serve you. Fill us this If he spoke to you, you come tonight. appreciate the privilege to be here. We appreciate Dale. Dale, I'm so thankful that you've got him here. He's a great man, and you stick with him, and, and um, I believe God's going to bless you greatly. So, um, anybody got anything to say before we dismiss?
again, thank you for letting me be here, and you're free to go.